This week, we talk about protein hacks. Also, we'll talk about a study finally noticing you can reverse type 2 diabetes with diet. And compare my new growing technique to 50-plus world record holder, Dr. Sean Baker. Let's get into it. Yes, it's true. I pulled up my rower. It's a miracle. And I sat on it. You did? Uh Uh-huh. Did you do anything else? We're going to get to that. You just sit on it. No, I got got video evidence. Sit on it and tie your shoes. Remember, Remember the fonts? Of course. That was what they used to say at Happy Days all the time. Sit on it. That was sit, <laughs> sit on it, Potsy. That was like the, <laughs> the harshest thing you could say. It to was. It was such a burn. Slam, baby. Oh, burn. Oh, I know I didn't say I got to, uh, we're going to talk about how many compliments I got this week, but I got a good one. We so only have an hour. I got to bring it up. <laughs> so it's been a couple of weeks of a drought where I haven't gotten any compliments. So really? this needs to be rectified. Okay. Okay. So here we're, we go. We might have to start fishing. <laughs> I was at a gig, okay, had my sleeveless tight shirt on, and some dude that we played a gig that he used to manage, I don't know, 10 years ago. And mind you, I was never fat, remember that. I was always just kind of, had no muscles and was just kind of squishy. Skinny fat. Yeah, squishy. So he comes up and he goes, dude, you're an inspiration. You sure you meant the lifting? He said that. Or was it your riffing? No, he was like grabbing my arms and like. Oh, doing really? That. Yeah, he was like, dude, what, what have you been doing? Uh, yeah. The, and I haven't seen the guy in a, like a decade. Okay. I'm not big on the handy thing. Yeah, that's, I don't love that. But <laughs> um, so, you know, that, that felt kind of good because he just came out of nowhere. And, you know, I never, I mean, he like ran up to me and was like, holy shit, dude. So that was a like a legit unsolicited compliment sorry i loved it so are you into him too or <laughs> or is it one-sided so we went back around the building <laughs> just so yeah do we gotta unpack between, this between the dumpsters i mean don't <laughs> judge me i'm not gay but twenty dollars is twenty dollars <laughs> Yo, you get paid <laughs> dang it yeah so that was a uh, that was pretty pretty awesome a legit compliment that's good good it for was. you yeah I'm, I'm i'm just loving the newbie gains baby it's fun. It, it's it, it can't be your why, but it's still fun, <laughs> right? It can be a kind of a why. Uh, if it's your why, it's probably well, short it's, short run. Well, it's going to go away exactly. Eventually, either people everybody's used to seeing you yep. with muscles, or you start to lose them as you get older, and you're not as impressive, and then it just wanes, you know. And then you then you quit. Yeah. And then you, right. you go. You from, you, that's why you can't use it as an inspiration right. or as the as your why, like you said. Because you go from, dude, what happened? Look at you. <laughs> to, and then to, dude, dude what, what happened? happened? <laughs> yes. Yeah. The inflection is completely <laughs> different between the two, and that second one is fucking heartbreaking. <laughs> oh, dude, yes. Well, you. Well, I don't know. Did you ever go to your 10-year reunion or 20-year reunion? No, none. I've never been to a high school reunion because my high school is too big. It's funny because, well, yeah, my, my class was like 300 people, but. That was my gym, um, that was my gym class. Oh, right. I didn't go to my 10-year, but I think I had a gig or something. But I was talking to somebody who went to their 10-year and we were discussing it. And we were saying, well, that's like when everybody's like really in their prime. They're out the of their tenure? high school. Yeah, because yeah. they're 28. You know, they're out of their high school awkwardness. Yeah, but they're, they still don't know what they're going to do with their life. <laughs> well, maybe not. But, I mean, physically, like I'm yeah. speaking, you know. Oh, you're, for sure. You're kind of like, doubt. you know, you're kind of into. Not that gangly awkward. Yeah, you figured out some style, you know, sure. whatever. Okay. Or you didn't. <laughs> right. But then the 20 year is when the real things to start to really separate. Oh, yeah. Then you get the guy that looks like Big Earn on. Yeah, because then you get guys that are like, look like a legit grandpa's. Right. And right. Then you, and then you get dudes that are still in shape and looking good. And, you know, the declines have started on some. And it's kind of interesting. The, you know, and then my 30 year actually is like next weekend. I got to play a gig so I can't go, but I'm curious to see. You know what the differences are like now because now we're all fifty. So you're ninety one. So ninety. Well, oh, we okay. it was our, our last year's got our thirty got COVID. And, okay. Yeah, got, yep. got postponed. So we're just doing the thirty one. Okay. So I mean, everybody's fifty now. You know, so it's gonna be. Yep. <laughs> some people are gonna look like full on grandpas, and some people will look better than that. There. <laughs> 
It's funny <laughs> to say that. I wasn't fishing, but. It's funny to say that because I see a lot of classmates on Facebook and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I'm like, it's kind of a weird picture to take with your dad. Like, <laughs> oh, wait, that's her husband. Oh, yeah. Brutal. I'm like, he's got to be 70. Uh, nope, nope, same age. Same, yeah, you graduated yeah. the same year. Yeah, <laughs> right. late 40s. I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. That's, what's his name? Yeah. Yep. He looks 70. It's crazy, man. Yeah, it, it's, I always looked young when I was younger. Well, yeah, some of that is just, yeah. no matter what you do, yep. no matter how good your diet is and your workout routine right. and all that, right. some of it, some people just look old. And exactly. There, there and it paid, dude, it paid, it paid, it, 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 I, Fucking now it's sucked. good. Now it's it good. It sucked when I was trying to buy beer when I was 19, <laughs> but now it's awesome. <laughs> there was a dude in my high school that when we were, he was a junior, he had a full like Duck Dynasty beard. Oh, and, I yeah, mean, he yeah, looked like yeah. a dad. Yep. And he was, you know, 16 or 17. Yeah, I bet now he looks like he's 90. Probably. So. Probably right, did. Let's get into some stuff here. So um, we got past my compliments. Only took six minutes. That's I like good. it. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so. Um, Talk about, I saw Ken, our, one of our favorites, Dr. Ken Berry, brought up this study, and uh, he says, medical science, and he's kind of snarky about this too, because he's been yelling this from the rooftops for years. Right. He says, medical science has, in quotes, discovered that hashtag low carb reverses type 2 diabetes. Wish I had thought of that. <laughs> Sarcasm. He <laughs> said, really, I'm glad that the pressure all of you have put on them is paying off. And then he tags the American Diabetes Association and says, ready to make a statement yet? So I thought that was kind of interesting. So. That uh, is super interesting. Yeah, now here's the study. You know, we've talked about, we've done a full episode on this, but here's the study that, uh, or the article that talks about the study, I should say. So it's basically the title is Simple Changes to Diet Could Put Type 2 Diabetes into Remission for Patients. So, so, uh, and this is something, you know, we've been, we've been saying since day one of our episodes and, um, you know, a lot of low-carb doctors have seen this and counseled their patients right through this process and completely got off all meds related to, to lowering blood sugar. And it seems like that it's finally kind of catching on. People are realizing that. Um, study authors report that people can effectively control their type 2 diabetes through carefully planned dietary adjustments. The research team also stresses the importance of local pharmacists during this process who should carefully monitor medication usage and dosages while patients are dieting. So they tracked a group of type 2 diabetes patients as they adhere to a 12-week diet program managed by their local pharmacists. Each study That's participant... An odd manager of a diet yeah they call it pharmacist yeah i, mean, I think it's in canada so that's that's probably why um, maybe they, that's just what they refer to them as their medical i don't know basic <laughs> your general practitioner or something is they call them, i don't know um, okay each study participant stuck to a low calorie low carbohydrate higher protein meal plan uh, mm -hmm. and had to check in with their pharmacists regularly regarding medication use Okay, so but then he quotes the leader of the study says, type 2 diabetes can be treated and sometimes reversed with dietary interventions. However, we need a strategy to help people implement these interventions while keeping an eye out on their medication changes. Awesome. So let's see if it gets into, basically just says low carb, low calorie, right? High protein. Um, so two groups. One followed the new diet plan and a control group that didn't change their usual eating habits. By the time three months had passed, more than one-third the, of those in the diet group had stopped taking all diabetes medications. Wow. That's crazy. In three months. This didn't happen for any patients in the control group. <laughs> what does that tell you? I mean, Jesus. Snap. That's pretty freaking clear cut, isn't it? It's mic dropping material there. Yeah. I mean, that's not even, it's not even like some did this, some got this, some didn't, some over here got it, some didn't, but there's a little more over here. It's like, no, a third of this group got off their meds and nobody in this group did. Just from simple calorie restriction. Yeah. Over calorie and carbohydrate restriction. Right. And emphasis on protein. Well, it does say the other, the control group still restricted calories, right? Oh, I, no, I think one didn't, didn't change their eating habits. Ah, see, there's their out. Yep. There's the seco out. That's going to be, they're still over-consuming energy. Right. Well, that would have been an interesting study. 
or can I put you both on 2000 calories or whatever they consider like a, a calorically deficit. restricted? Yeah. Yep. And then one is low carb, you know, high protein that study, and one is whatever you want. It does exist. That one and, would be and more they, interesting. And they both lost. Lost. It wasn't type mm-hmm. two. It was just fat loss. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. So that may affect, you know, they may, well, obviously we know in a deficit, you're going to lose the f- body fat. Right. But reversing of the type two diabetes, you can still be skinny and have diabetes. Right. You know, so that, that'd be interesting to, to run that experiment. But, uh, you know, there's, again, we've talked about this many times, how everyone viewed diabetes, type two diabetes anyways, as a chronic, See, but incurable here's, condition. And it's Here's not. the, I'm going to just be a spokesperson for the Seco zealots, mm-hmm. even though they don't think they're zealots, but they are. <laughs> Who is it anymore? <laughs> right, exactly. Everything's so polarized. <laughs> but their argument is going to be, we never said that low carbohydrate, high protein, low moderate fat diet wouldn't reverse type 2 diabetes. We said the low carbohydrate, moderate fat, high protein diet won't eliminate the chance of you getting type two or becoming type two. That's what they're saying. Mm. So, which that's just an enigma wrapped in a riddle. I mean, you, you can't prove that you can't disprove it either. No. Yeah. So there's no way of having a control group or a study and saying, all right, you're not going to eat carbs. Mm Mm-hmm for the next 20 years and then get back to us and say, did you end up type two? Right. Yeah, exactly. So they know that that's, you're in a box, so you have nowhere to go. So that's, that's going to be their reply to this study. Yeah. Is we never said it couldn't reverse it. We just said eating carbs doesn't cause it. Right. That's going to be their out. Well, and like, like we said, you know, I think if you restrict calories, you will lose body fat. But uh, yeah, that study needs to be done where it's both calorically restricted, but one is low carb and one isn't. Yep. You know, and then does the type carb, does yeah. the diabetes get reversed at that point? Right. I, w- I would say both both groups would probably see benefits because just the act of reducing your weight and reducing your body fat does lessen the you know severity. I would say, right? Because mm-hmm. you know. It, Typically, you know, type, type 2 diabetics are associated with having a lot more, you know, body fat on. So, I don't know. Yeah. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty cut and dried, though. If, if I was type 2 diabetic. That's the first thing I'd why, do. Why wouldn't you try it? Right. I mean, but do both. Calorically restrict and restrict the carbs. Right. Unless you're a performance athlete. And, you know, yep. you, if you don't need the benefits of the, the carbs, then why exactly. suffer through the negatives? Right. Um, all right. So that was very interesting. I'll post that study in the show notes, obviously, as always. Agreed. I like that. Yeah, Ken Berry. He's very good. I saw this thing was uh, interesting here. <laughs> These new realistic mannequins. This is a Minnesota somewhere, too. Of course it is. I don't know what. Uh, We're accepting. What you the, know what, though? The guy with that physique would wear that shirt. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> but, okay, so. For those of you listening on the audio, but he has version. white New Balances on too. Yeah, right. With white socks, we're looking at dad bod mannequins, basically. So they got, you know, no muscle tone, no shoulders, and decent sized guts. Not insane, crazy fat, but Pl- plenty big. Dad, dad bod. They're over forty inches. Oh yeah, I mean, if you look at them from the side, the guts sticking out, pretty good. Right. You know, they look they look second trimester at least. <laughs> Could be a soccer player. <laughs> so new realistic mannequins rub Minnesota dads the wrong way. So this apparently this blew up on Reddit. Um, Still they, don't know what that is. It's just basically you know a place where people go to discuss to allegedly freely discuss things. Uh, but then of course they get shut down anyways. So yeah, the Minnesota thread of Reddit. <laughs> The photo features mannequins in an unnamed retail store. The mannequins, while headless, are presumably male, sporting men's apparel over rather conspicuous beer bellies. Text over the photo reads, 2021 Dads of Lake Malax Summer Collection. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, uh, that is good. So, you know, we, we, we covered this once with the 
I the, feel attacked with the women's because they had the full oh, yeah, mannequins yeah, at the yep. Nike store. Well, here they got the dad bod mannequins now at this at this retail store. And the you know the question is, what do we think about that? How does it's it make bullshit. you feel? It's bullshit. My opinion, and uh, I still have the same opinion as I had before, was that mannequins are supposed to be aspirational, and that's what fashion is in general. So I don't think you should sink to the level of where people are at and normalize. Like, because to me, this just says to any dad bod, "Hey, you're just normal, so roll with it." Well, here, here's, here's, <laughs> I'm gonna take a take that nobody probably thought of, but. The point from a marketing standpoint is to sell those shirts. If I look at that and bought and I go, I don't want to look like that. So I ain't buying that shirt. Exactly. <laughs> that's a, no, that, that's my point just from a different angle because right. that's why I say fashion and, and advertising and mannequins are supposed to be aspirational. Right. Because that's why they don't, you know, we've got to be careful here, but they don't hire ugly, in quotes, people, you know, to model clothes. Because you want your average dude or or housewife right. to see it and go, ooh, that looks good. Right. I bought an Under Armour shirt. I'll look like that if I wear that shirt. I bought an Under Armour shirt at Shields, one of their fitness mannequins. <laughs> right. And I'm like, I'm buying that shirt because I just want to look like that. <laughs> right, because that looks good. Right. Yeah, if you see the dad bod mannequin, you go, nah. I, I'm, I'm not, not I don't sure. want to head that direction at all. Look at it, looks like from 1958, and the it should have a front pocket with a pack <laughs> of crushed up Pall Malls in it. <laughs> it's a terrible looking shirt, but is it? What if it, what if it was on a, like a super buff mannequin? Would it be a terrible shirt still? No, not at all. I don't know. It'd be fine. Yeah, it's not, uh, to me, it's not a good direction that we're heading where you just kind of normalize this. <laughs> you know, As I'm looking at the mannequins, even though they don't have a head, I'm just waiting for one of them to say, oh, I got to sit down. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, they're in a mall, so yeah. Right. They've been that walking. Guy's, he's tired. They've been Look walking a little. He's got to sit down. around that belly. Oh, I need to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to take a nap here in the, <laughs> by the fountain. Right. Come back in an hour. Yep. Wake me up. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> just get that two o'clock afternoon carb crash. Yep. All right, so that was dad bod mannequins. And they even have moobs on the first one there. <laughs> it's like a little hangy. Oh, God. Do it's not cool. Bro. It's not cool, man. Okay. Well, now we're going to talk about my rowing. Okay. Right. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. First thing we have whoa. to do is we have to clarify whoa. something. You ain't whoa. got no concept, too. Yep, yeah, up, up, No, so, I, just, I just have like a cheap Amazon thing. Sure. I, and no I remember my accuracy. The on. one time I jumped on a cheap, super cheap Amazon type thing. Yeah. My um my five hundred meter was like one eighteen and I wasn't even breathing hard. So it was bullshit. Yeah, number. It's bullshit. Yeah. yeah. And I, I don't I don't I just want you to critique my technique. Oh. Like sure. I don't have stats for sure. me. Because I don't even know how to use the and I can out yet. And I can critique, you know, because I'm a certified crossfit coach. <laughs> exactly. Technically. I can right. actually visit or literally announce it now. <laughs> Excellent. <clears throat> okay, so let me uh let me get the vid here. Okay. Loading, loading, loading. Get that video loading. Okay, so uh, all right. There's me in my home gym. Okay. Decent starting position. I tried to remember. Use the legs. Yeah, but you're still going around your legs a little bit on the way. No, up. that's a straight shot. I tried to really keep it on a on a level plane. Like I didn't. And you went well, on, I did when I come on the going, on yeah, the, the comeback yep. on the return. I am yep. kind of going over my knees. So what's the solution for that? Just wait. Just return it. Just return the handle and then go in. Just put it over. So your put it hand. first. Okay, yes. yeah. So I'm screwing up the return. Okay. It's not screwing it up. Well, I'm just not doing it as maximum efficiency. <laughs> and the other thing you want to do is when you're doing a deadlift, mm -hmm. do you want to have all your weight in your toes? No, you want to keep your weight in your heels. Right. Same thing here. Okay. Keep your heels down. And, oh, and, and, gotcha. And, okay. It's so my feet are. Yep. 
And some of that's just because I'm so inflexible that when I well, my me butt too. moves forward, my feet can't help but go that way. Yep, me too. <laughs> so what some people do is tie like a rubber band, a, one of those big fitness rubber bands oh, okay. around the track. Oh, so you, you can't it, go in right, far right. enough. Okay. That's a good idea. You really sound like you're laboring though. Well, yeah, my cardio sucks. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the definition of laboring. I would uh, think of, here's just one tip that's going to make your life super easier, mm-hmm. is think. <sighs> Dude, that was like two minutes. <laughs> but I just went until it said 500. How long did it take you? It was about, let's see, the video is 143. Oh, that's impossible. Yeah, you got, we got to get you on a concept too. Yo, yeah, I'm not saying, like I said, I'm not saying that that's my official time. Right, right, right. Or whatever. Okay, so now that was me. Any, anything else to add? Um, keep your heels down. Heels down. Bigger, bigger pulls and, and slow down. Like take, think of a clean or a deadlift mm. and take huge, big, big, big pulls and then go like this. Because then you're and kind then of letting return. it yep. a more powerful spin because then it's getting, you're getting that extra yes. momentum off so of it. So let the, the damper slow down. Okay. Yep. And get, then again, big pull. So relax. rushing through it is not good. No. Okay. Nope. You're not going to get anywhere. Right. And you're just going to wear your heart out. And your lungs are going to be on fire. Mm. Yep. So slow down and take big, he- think weightlifting, not running. Right. So take big, hard, huge, heavy pulls. Does it have a resist- resistance thing on yeah, it? Yeah, it does. I just hit it in the middle. Middle's fine, yeah, but just not at the bottom, right? So keep it about in the middle, but take just think huge, heavy, big pulls, and then rest. Okay, Makes don't sense. be in don't be in a Makes rush sense. to return, right? Okay, now here is Dr. Sean Baker doing a world record pace. Or is this his actual video? Five hundred meter concept two fifty plus rowing world record. See, there you go. See his big pulls. Even though he's trying to do a world record, he's not rushing that return. Right. Wow. Look at his heels. Just looks so freaking easy yep. for him, though, too. <laughs> See the way his toes come up? Yeah. Because he's just pushing with his pushing with his ass. Yep. He's probably got that dampener turned all the way up to 10. Well, he's so huge, too, that it's just... It's just he can just easily just yank it. Right. So it easy. helps to be long. It really oh, yeah, does. Yeah, that I mean he's like six four or something. Yep. So he's starting with his legs, pushing all the way till they're flat. Yep. And then his arms he's kind of pulling the last. He's kind of going around his legs on the right Yeah, a little too. bit. Yeah, I think he's probably doing more more back and by, and curls than he would but he's to. but he's sprinting here yeah so he's going technique, for the world technique be damned yeah he's if he was doing like a 5,000 meter he wouldn't be doing like he's just going balls out yep I'm surprised he doesn't go back further he's not even that winded I was yeah. more winded on mine Dude, when than I did he is. <laughs> It's going to catch up to him in a second, though. There Remember, he's like 52 or something here. Right. Yeah, that's when I did that, when I did 123, which is considerably slower than him, Yeah, I just rolled out of the seat. <laughs> <laughs> there, now it's catching him. No, he's going to, he grabs the camera and he's going to show us uh, his readout so we can see the. Uh, Keep in mind. See what the machine says. Keep in mind, like literally a world class rower. Yeah. Oh, like actually yeah. in a boat. Oh, like in a real boat. Yeah. Okay. There's his readout. One seventeen point one. Jeez. So that's his pace. Yeah, his oh, ending pace where he was out of gas was my best ever. <laughs> <laughs> that's sick. And he's on a concept too. That's legit as can be. It's legit, yep. Isn't that crazy? Look at his, his 100 meter splits. Oh, not bad. The heart rate's pretty low. 
It is. His heart rate only got to 147. I mean, he's going balls out, too. All right, 171. 50 years old. Another world record. Cool. Shut up. Wow. <laughs> 50 years old and another world record. That was something, huh? That's crazy. And then I, I found this podcast, too. I'll put it in the show notes where he talks about indoor rowing records and the carnivore diet. So if anybody's interested in him talking about rowing specifically, he goes into that a lot. Um, so I'll post that link as well. That's crazy, man. It is. What an animal. What it's a such, ribeye eating animal. It's such, rowing such an amazing complete body workout. <laughs> it really is. I got to get a concept too so I can see what my legit numbers are. Okay, let me ask you this. Well, Here's the difference. How much was your rower? Like 200 bucks. Yeah, they're like 1200 Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you this, though. You said, th- does the resistance fa- thing factor in? Because higher the resistance, it's going to be harder to pull, right? Harder to pull, but then the more, the further you'll go. Oh, okay. So yep. if you're on 10, you get a lot more, it's like a higher gear. Right. So you get a lot more distance per pull. Yep. Oh, okay. But so it's then it's going to be super hard, but you're going to cover more ground. So if there's a giant that can just go zzz and the like Sean Baker, like him, <laughs> yeah, then he gets that's how he can get so much further in such less time. Yep. Because it's just his massiveness. Yep. And for me, I have to do a balancing act because I'm not Sean Baker. Yeah. But I am long. I'm almost, you know, almost 6'2, 200 yeah. pounds. You're taller than average. Yeah, definitely. And I'm strong, but I can't go all the way up to 10 because I'll run out of gas. Right. Where like even when you're carb fueled, oh, like three. It's my lungs, <laughs> but like 300, 350 meters in, if I'm that high on the damper, I'll just be like, <clears throat> you would just gas out. Yep. Yeah. Where he can just go balls out right. on the full thing and right. Yeah, and just because of his massiveness. Yeah. Yeah. Weight matters. I mean, oh, even yeah. when your your body weight Completely. is that inertia from just pushing back. Yeah. There's no way like, well, and you know, think about it. Okay, so he was doing men's age group yep really rowing should be almost height it should be height class yep there should be height because there's no way a five foot person can do what a six four person could do no way that's why when there's rowing in a class and i look around and there's 15 people in the class and it's like 26 calories because you can roll for calories too right it'd be like we just did one the other day for 26 calories and i looked got up 26, I jumped up, I looked around, nobody's even close. Right. I mean, they caught me on the gymnastic stuff, right. but, and that's the way it should be. Yeah. They're all shorter and smaller. So I'm just wondering now, like on these classifications, if they're really f- a true, you know, if they're fair. No, no, it Not should really, be. Yeah. No, it should be. It should be I, height, I think, height or weight or something. I've always said CrossFit in general, not just rowing or any anything, but just all of CrossFit should be, have weight classes. Right. And not that I'm saying everything has to be fair, because guess what? I just don't get to be in the NBA. Sorry. Right. <laughs> you know, it's a meritocracy. Yes but, and no. But if they're going to have NBA but, for shorties, you know, five foot eight and under. It's a whatever. meritocracy, but there's also weight classes in wrestling for a reason. Mm-hmm. So. Well, did you wrestle like in high school and stuff? No. So I wonder. <laughs> I don't know what that look was, but. <laughs> Usually wrestlers are pretty well respected. Sure. Um, but, <laughs> but okay, let's you have a wrestling I grew meet. up in the state of hockey. Oh, gotcha. So when wrestlers compete in their weight class, but then do they go for an overall champ at the end? Nope. Oh, okay. No, if you win state in your weight class, you're the state That's champion. That's the top. Okay. Yep. So so then the heavyweight champ of the state would considered that's the top wrestler in the state, honestly, because he could destroy the guy no, but below him. Maybe. Some of the guys below him might be able to beat him. Unless he's a phenom or something. Yeah. But all things or being equal. they could equal, just be stronger. Yeah. But all things being equal, typically, yep. they would destroy him. Maybe. Yeah. But it's like boxing. Yeah. You don't let Mike Tyson go down to featherweight. Well, I, but I was thinking, because like with dogs, they always do the, okay, now we got the terriers. And then we oh, got the, right. And then right. at the end, they do best in show. Oh, I see what you're saying. So like, you yeah, know, yeah, is yeah, there yeah. a true champion? No. Guess not. All right. Well. No. So much for that. I tried. You get an A for effort, though. <laughs> All right, let's get into our topic, which is protein hacks. And actually, we got a question from a gal who wanted to know how to get more protein in her diet, right? And 
we've been on the Ted Naiman thing, the PE diet, which is focus on the protein, pick an energy source and keep that to a small amount. That'll support exercise, but not fat gain. Yep. And have your protein, hit your protein goals without going over your calorie goals. That's the simplest way I've found to explain it. Mm -hmm. Hit your protein goals. I'll say that again. Hit your protein goals without going over your calorie target. Yep. It's hard to do. Hard to do. So when you're doing, when you're thinking about this, you have to think about some ways to up your protein because all things being equal, it's hard to hit that protein goal without going over the caloric goal or target your your limit or whatever you want to say. It takes a very concerted effort. It does because left to your own devices, you're going to probably go way over the caloric target and in order to hit the protein goal. So how, that means how do you increase your protein percentage every day? So we're going to talk about some hacks. Specifically in terms of units of energy, the, and, and the reason, the best way to explain that is, and, and what you're trying to <laughs> use as an example, yeah. is the, in the, strictly in the terms of units of energy, the, comp- the protein to fat ratio in a ribeye is probably even. Right. Too fatty. Right. If you're yep. trying to stay Correct. in a caloric deficit and have a high pro- emphasis on protein. Right. Yeah. So if you need to get to the, you know, you want to shoot for 0.7 to 1 gram per um, pound of body weight. Of goal body oh, weight. Oh, right, right. Yes. People who are 400 should so be eating 400 grams of protein. Right. Yep. Of goal body weight. That's an important distinction. Yep. So if you're above where you want to be weight-wise... You need to be eating less than you think probably, yep. but a higher percentage of that being protein. Yep. And if you are 400 pounds and you really need to make some drastic changes and lose a lot of weight, you should really, really, really have an honest conversation with yourself and probably a medical professional on what your goal weight should be. Right. Because most people are like, I'm 400 pounds now, but, and this is actual conversations I've had with people. Yeah. I'm 400 pounds now, but if I could get around 260, 270, I'd be, I'd be pretty lean. No, you wouldn't. You would not. Right. Your lean body weight's still massively. probably about 175, dude. Yeah. 260 is still massively obese. Right. Unless you're Arnold Schwarzenegger. But the problem is. He was only like 240 or something, right? Right. The problem is, is you, you're, you're asking. That's but a, relative to 400, I mean, it's... That's a super shitty analogy I was about to use. But I'm going to use it anyways because it, it applies. Why not? It's how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time. Right. So when they say I'm going from 400 to 260, let them. Let them. Yeah. It's okay to think Because that's that. a massive accomplishment. A huge accomplishment. Yeah. And I mean, you get there, then you go, okay, now here's where we are and here's where we need to be. Right. Then you're, it's a new starting point. Yep. You're not there yet. Right. But you got to... You're probably, the, you're probably halfway. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But it's so, it's like the, the overwhelm trying to boil the ocean or eat an elephant. It's <laughs> right to, to literally the, yeah, the, actually the boil the ocean is probably a better analogy Yeah. when trying to lose that much weight. And mm-hmm. so don't try, Mm-mm. just boil a little kettle at a time and yep. make progress. Yep. So we're going to look at a couple articles here where they talk about ways to increase your protein. <clears throat> and this is kind of a, what I'd call a normie article. Sure. It's not really, you know, from a super fitnessy hardcore perspective like us. People aren't going to go. You know, so yeah. this is kind of normie. So we're just going to analyze some one. of these. So, okay. Swap regular yogurt for Greek yogurt. Okay. So that I'm assuming uh, Greek yogurt much must have more protein, right? Sure. Okay. So I that's a that's a good tip. I hope it's that much. Regular yogurt often has tons of additives, hidden sugar, especially the flavored ones. But plain Greek yogurt can have almost up to twenty grams of protein per serving. That's pretty good. So yeah, if you're eating regular yogurt, switch to Greek. That's good. Choose eggs over cereal. Now, see, this is where I call this a normie article because I wouldn't even consider cereal at all. Because to me, there's nothing redeeming about cereal. Because cereal's you- dessert. It's completely dessert. So in my household, I've completely gotten rid of cereal and we're just an eggs and sausage kind of family for- Awesome. Yeah. For, I mean, cereal's been gone a long time. We haven't had 2% milk or anything like that in the house for years. Really? Oh yeah. That's good. So to me, this is like an obvious one, but, but yeah, I mean, if you switch from cereal to eggs, holy crap, 
that right there, a third of your day, you know, if you're, if you're eating three meals a day, switch to such a perfect protein source. When I, when I started trying to not worry, focus so much on aesthetics Uh and more on performance, that included starting to eat breakfast more often. Oh, yep. And you know what? It's a, we're a slave to convenience. Oh, yeah. Because when I wake up and it's like egg whites and spinach and some chicken sausage because I'm trying to keep my fat low, mm-hmm. what a pain in the ass. <laughs> Fucking washing those dishes and, ah, dang it. As opposed to st- going through McDonald's and getting a McMuffin, you mean? Or, or supposed as opposed to just not eating. <laughs> oh, right. Yes. And Well, yeah, there's nothing more convenient than fasting. Right. <laughs> Fasting's so easy. Oh, jeez. You literally just leave the house. And Mal, you know, Mal's pissed off at me now because there's a stinky frying pan from egg whites in the right. sink. And I'm like, I'm oh, sorry, I don't have time. I yep. got to go. Yep. Well, then she's like, well, get up earlier. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, because that's what I want to do. Is Sleep sit. hygiene. Right. Didn't you hear our episode 15? Dude, I slept <laughs> nine <laughs> hours last night. That's And here's the part that is going to absolutely blow you away. Sorry to squirrel, but you brought up sleep. Nine energy. hours, yeah, that's, you're not getting that usually. I'm definitely not getting Nine that. Nine hours. Look at my minutes awake. So what does that mean, during those nine? During those nine hours, I was awake. A For total seven minutes? Seven minutes. How do you do that? Out of nine hours. But how do you even do that? You wake yourself up all night long. Oh, okay. Everybody does. You just they don't know, know it. So that's just understood? Yep. Wow. So I had... What's your percentage normally? Is it a lot higher? Oh God, yes. Like show me a show me a more regular day. Um that would probably be well, knowing me the day before. <laughs> <laughs> so seven minutes out of nine hours, yeah, that's pretty small percentage. It's unbelievably small. Oh look at now. I'm just gonna <laughs> two. <laughs> It's going going the wrong way, <laughs> Josh. You're, while you're looking, we'll talk about this next one. Add a handful of pecans to a salad. See, so, you know, this is one I, I wouldn't even do just because, like, you know. I think I think nuts are a great alternative. Yeah. I mean, it's better than breakfast cereal. That's for damn right, sure. Right. Okay. Choose low-fat there. cheese instead of junk food. Oh, okay. Oh, 16. Oh, yeah. Yep. Double that. Yep. Yeah, that's probably a little more normal. Okay. <clears throat> so choose low-fat cheese instead of junk food. Well, duh. I mean, eating cheese instead of a Snickers bar, of course. But the fat, Josh. It's obvious. But the fat. Add lentils to your soup. Mm. These are awfully vegan this is, yeah, solutions. Exactly. Add quinoa and black beans to homemade veggie burgers. I'm skipping that one. Jesus. Dude, dude you just, you're using a, a, a vegan article. <laughs> you just got catfished. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I preface this by saying, this is a normie type article. Sure. You know, it's not a hardcore carnivore animal based fitness freak kind of article. Oh, they're, in, in their defense, they're probably trying to what we just talked about is right. trying to Baby increase steps. increase protein Baby without steps. having to have a huge caloric impact. Yep. Add hummus to a sandwich. Okay. Forget, it says, forget the fattening mayo and cheese. You can satisfy your need for something super creamy by spreading hummus on your sandwich instead. Yeah, to that, I say, is- no thanks. Uh, top stir fried veggies with chopped almonds. This is a very, for those of you watching on YouTube or that goes and looks at this actual article, this is a very carbohydrate driven approach. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Um, okay. Ricotta, love, swap ricotta for cottage. Okay. Love cottage cheese. See, so, you know, that's, I had no concept of the difference in protein between the two. It says, yes, ricotta cheese has protein. A half a cup has about 14 grams, but it also has a ton of fat, which is why it tastes so good. Swap ricotta for cottage cheese in cold dips for about the same amount of protein with fewer calories and less fat. I get the skim mm-hmm. okay. cottage, so it has hardly any fat. Okay. I don't even know what the hell this is. Add pepitas to your, hum- to your hummus. Gesundheit, I say. I would have said those are pumpkin seeds. Okay, is that what that is? Oh yeah, also known as pu- roasted pumpkin oh, okay. seeds. Okay, I was just I was just going by looking at it. <laughs> See, I've not even okay sneaking sneak in flavorless protein powders. This is a big hack of mine. We're going to talk about. Yeah, me too. So yeah, that's one way to easily up your protein. <clears throat> Snack on a hard boiled egg. Speaking of that's chores, that's a great one. Yeah, making them sucks. Okay, peeling them sucks. Making them, you well, just put on the stove and turn it on. It, well. <laughs> 
<laughs> Peeling them sons of bitches. Have ah. you, but have you ever went down the rabbit hole to figure out how to make the perfect hard boiled egg? Yes. So it won't. It'll just come off in one. Like you basically just go like doink, and then it goes. I don't believe it. <laughs> I think it's I saw David Blaine do it once. Sorcery. It's true. Exactly. Substitute fatty lunch meats for lean ones. Okay. And non processed ones that are well, also don't eat the three thousand grams of. And also don't eat the bread. Just eat the meat. Depends. <laughs> Depends on your goals. Yep. Sprinkle salad with nutritional yeast. Ew. Yeah. No. I just think of the infection. Okay, here. Top sweet treats with macadamia nuts. This whoa, one's dangerous. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Dangerous. Yep. A lot of calories. There in is these. nothing on These this are famous in, in famous in keto because of their fat content. Well, yeah, but there's nothing on this planet that's more calorically dense than a macadamia nut. Yep. Seriously, like yeah. four halves of those nuts is like 7,000 <laughs> calories. That's crazy. Add tahini to salad dressing. What the hell's tahini? Rice. Sesame paste. Okay. Ugh. No, thanks. Add ancient grains to like amaranth to your salads. Now just throw some freaking ribeye on it or chop up some chicken breast. Not ribeye because too, too much fat. Right. Um, okay. Swirl nut butter. <laughs> into your oatmeal. That looks like freaking dessert to me, dude. It is. That is freaking dessert. I mean, peanut butter in your oatmeal. Candied pecans. Come on. Use a pesto with pine nuts and tree nuts. Okay. Nine grams. That's not even going to move the needle. Some of these are stupid. Yeah. Chia seeds and puddings and baking. There's chi- See, can- my answer to all these is just eat some, just eat a, some meat. Just eat a chicken breast. Just eat a lean steak. But, just eat some salmon. You know... And somebody who's really trying the last six months of mm-hmm. really trying to prioritize protein, you're gonna you're gonna say this is blasphemous, but <laughs> dude, I get sick eating meat sometimes. Yeah, I do. No, I agree. I get another fucking chicken breast. Oh yeah, well the chicken breast especially because they're just not as satisfying as a freaking ribeye. Right, and that's my problem is like I love the fatty meats. Right. So yeah, it's it's tough to go. The leaner meats just aren't as tasty. I yeah, mean, fat. Your the human body just loves fat. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> remember those old snack snack wells, those diet cookies and yeah. shit. All they did was take the fat out and put a bunch of sugar in, so they could say low fat. And they taste like shit. Taste like shit, and they weren't any better for you because you're still getting tons of sugar. <clears throat> and next kid, you bite into it and go, "These taste healthy." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay, try one of these new meat snacks. Yeah, for seven thousand dollars a pound. Oh yeah, freaking jerky is so. Oh, ooh, ooh, it says bake a potato. Ooh, this one's kind of out of left field here. It says we talked about peas earlier, <clears throat> but a regular old russet potato also has a surprising eight grams. Of An entire potato stuff. for eight grams. Mm, that's a lot. So, of, what's your body weight? One seventy. So, how many potatoes you got to eat? Oh. You got 170 grams. <laughs> yeah, no shit. I couldn't do it. Yeah, so it's not going to really up your... There's much more efficient ways. Swap your bread slice for Ezekiel bread. I don't know what yeah, that Yeah, but is. eat the whole loaf that week mm. or it's going to be a science project. <laughs> there's no preservatives or anything oh, in gotcha. that stuff. Okay. It's good so, though. Yeah. It's All really right. good. I like it. So that was one article. So that's kind of a nor- what we call a normie article about protein. Not a lot of tips in there I would recommend. I, I did like the, you know, swap the cereal for eggs. That was a great one. The regular yogurt for Greek yogurt. That was the, a good one. The the tasteless, odorless protein. Yep. Which I don't do. I use chocolate. Yeah. I mean, it's all about the, as long as the numbers are there. Okay. So now let's talk about, no, you mentioned the grams per pound, pound of body weight of your goal weight. Okay. Right. So. Here what it says is the, let's see, the daily value for protein is set at 50 grams per day, which is an average that works for most people, athletes, or other people looking to build muscle mass. That's us, bitch. <laughs> they want to consume more. That's why we're talking 170. And and see that last sentence, 50. the athletes or other people, that should be everybody. That should be everybody. That should not be because just athletes. Right, because everybody should want to build more muscle mass. Yep. That's it's what preserves life. Correct. Uh, okay, so here here's their, their quick list. High protein foods include lean chicken, lean pork, fish, lean beef, tofu, beans, lentils, low fat yogurt, milk, cheese, seeds, nuts, and eggs. What's your position on pork? Because it's um, funny because in the carnivore circles, pork is kind of gets shit on, you know? Yeah. 
It's a, weird. Like, I, I, for some reason, everybody loves beef. That's yep. universal. People they, are kind of torn they, on chicken, and, but pork, they're kind of. Eh. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's a good source of lean protein. I think so. I mean, Most I think, of the time, like a loin or a to pork. To me, pork loin is freaking tasty as shit. I think it tastes good too. Pork, like if you get the pork bellies, like they have a Costco, bake it, you know, season it's like a big, just yes. big slab of yep. pretty much bacon, you know? Yeah. God, that's good. Did you know that pork most closely resembles human flesh? <laughs> the people who have eaten, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> cannibals have said that they've. Cannibals who have eaten pork said it's indistinguishable. It checks out. So now <laughs> I dare you to eat a pork chop and not think about this conversation. I'm going to be like fucking Dewey. I <laughs> no, it's fucking Dewey. Ever since I learned that, I'm like, this could be people. <laughs> All right. Let's look at the top 10 protein food list. Number one, lean chicken breast. Now, this is why bodybuilders have been doing this forever. Right. Lean chicken breast Protein and broccoli, you know, just, yeah, because they're just, it's just medicine to them. Right. You know, they, they don't care about the taste. They're just like, I need X amount of grams. This is the it's, most efficient way to get it. It's like pulling up to a gas pump. Shovel it in. Yep, exactly. They don't care what it tastes like at all. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. I mean, protein in a six ounce breast, 54.5 grams. So, shit. I mean, you can get, you can get your whole daily even what we want in three chicken breasts. And that's almost strictly protein. Right. Because 54, I'm going to do tox marks here. So. He's doing the math, people. Number two, lean pork chops. So basically chopping the fat off of them. So that's about 216 8. calories. Okay. In that chicken breast, the six ounce chicken breast, 216 calories and just protein. Right. So the total cal caloric intake of that six ounce chicken breast is probably three eight, three ten. So so if you want to get it's almost all protein. Yeah, and if your goal is let's say two thousand calories a day is your deficit goal or whatever, you can get you can stay under that easily, and still hit the protein goal easily. Yep. So it's only going to get worse from here because that was the number one as far oh. as most protein per calorie. Yep. And it's just going to get a little bit pulling away from that. And then eventually it's going to be impossible to stay under the caloric goal. Exactly. Once we get to these le lesser protein filled foods. Yep. So number two is lean pork chops. Notice right under chicken. Okay. That's right. That's what I was saying. It's yeah. lean. If you get like a lean tenderloin or a pork cutlet. Yeah. It may taste like people, but. <laughs> it didn't before. <laughs> 52.7 grams in a six ounce chop. That's pretty good. I mean, you can eat three of those and you're at your goal for the whole day. I like to take my pork chops and put them in ice cold water with a mixture of salt, pepper, and Lowry seasoning salt. Oh, yes, and I put yes. them in that marinade and for like three days before I put them on the grill. Okay. That's good. <sighs> that Lowry's, I found this Cajun seasoning that's Cut it so with a freaking fork. good too. Yeah, that's... I love pork. I do too. Tuna, number three. Okay, 50.8 grams in a six ounce filet. Tuna. That's a, a close. Yeah, that's right. That's right there with pork. Yep. I mean, that was just, just under. So that's tuna, great, a great choice. Beef. Spendy. Okay, yeah, tuna spendy. Beef, skirt steak. Okay, 48.7 grams in a six ounce steak. Okay, it says more lean red meat, high in protein, lamb, ground beef, roast beef, roast buffalo, and beef hamburger. But look how look at beef hamburger is only twenty one point seven compared to the forty eight in this lean steak, the mm -hmm. skirt steak here. So I mean, there is a vast difference in the amount of protein in different cuts of beef. For sure. You know, and I guess it's yep. really just more about the the fat content, the protein versus fat. Yep. Notice ribeye is not even on here. Oh right. Because <laughs> it's just yep, skip it. so much fat. Yeah, there's but the, nothing tastes better. It's one Whoa, for number one. five, firm tofu. And skipping that. Never had it. Never will. Number six, lentils. Okay. Number yeah. seven, low-fat yogurt. Eat it every night. But still only 14 grams, you know, per cup. But it's, you know, better than the than I the, drink, or I, eat, I eat two cups of um, Oikos Zero. Mm-hmm. With now, what is zero? Does that mean there's zero added sugars? Zero, zero sugar, zero fat, zero. That has zero sugar or zero sugar added? Zero sugar. Like when you look at the, the carb yeah. count is. Yep. It's got, um, it's all just like Diet Coke. It's okay. got all the, just oh, the fake some, sugar. Yep. Some aspartame or something. Yep. So <laughs> I eat that with blueberries, actual blueberries. Right. 
Um, and then a small handful of like super dark, dark, like 65% chocolate mm. chips. Oh yeah. That shit's good. And then with the blueberry, it's really good. And it's and that's super pretty low, low sugar. Oh yeah. Low, you know, carb. Very low on the glycemic index. Yep. Uh, the glycemic load of dark, dark baker's chocolate yeah, is yeah. really low. Which I love by the way. I do too. And especially when you're not. Wolfing down sweets on the regular on a regular basis, right? That shit tastes Your palate sweet. Changes it does change because I, you know, when you give a kid milk milk chocolate, they go yum, and you give them dark, they go ick, and then they give them the baker stuff, and they go, dude, this is chalk, right? right. <laughs> and then they, this this is bitter chalk, but when you're eating low carb, that baker stuff oh, tastes amazing, absolutely. And, and then fruit starts to actually taste super sweet, right? Like right. you eat an actual strawberry, you're like, holy shit, this is nature's candy. Right, right, right. But I remember when I was a kid, I used to put sugar on my freaking strawberries. Well, for sure. Grandma always used to do that. <laughs> and on the rhubarb. Uh, insane. But anyways, then I top off that concoction with a handful of um, this mix of granola, raisins, cranberries. And I mix all that with the... Greek vanilla yogurt. Okay. It's a really, really yeah, that's good pretty, nightcap. Pretty good, you know, desserty type option. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It kind of scratches that itch. Yeah, and it hits all the hits the protein goals without without going crazy on the on the calories. And I go I go way over on my protein. I'd like to know what the calorie count of that is. Like what's that what's that Oikos stuff? Super low. Is it low? Yeah. It's only 100, <clears throat> 150. Okay. I'm going to try that. I'm going to get some of that. Okay, grated Parmesan is the next thing on the list for high protein count really? per ounce. I would have never thought that. Nope. 10.2 grams per ounce. Of course, but who eats Parmesan by the cup? You know, I mean, that's not that's something a lot. eat a lot of. So Unless it's tough you go to, to Olive Garden. Tough, yeah, but then you just get a shit ton of oils and other crap in there. Squash and pumpkin seeds below that at 8.5 grams per one ounce handful. <laughs> and then eggs. That's crazy that eggs are this far down. I, get, I, I would not that's why guess you have to that. go egg whites. Yeah, the yolks are so fatty. Yep. Yeah, so that's. We'll get into some our personal hacks in a minute here, but that's definitely one of them. Is use egg whites over full eggs. Yep. Um, okay. So, Poor. if I'm really really lacking, I'll just go straight Rocky Balboa. <laughs> And just, just do pound it? No, just egg whites oh. in my protein shake. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And just glug, glug, glug. Wow. And it's like I'll get all 195 grams in this one shake. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, so then we're going to bring up our buddy, Ted Naiman here, who we've talked about many times, and he's the super advocate of the protein first kind of diet, the PE diet. So what he says um, – it's contributing to this article, which I'll post on Diet Doctor here. It says, at the other end of the spectrum, Dr. Ted Naiman advocates high protein intake for people who follow low-carb or keto. No, it's not keto. Stop fucking saying that. <laughs> Especially those interested in weight loss. His recommendation is to consume one gram of protein per one pound of lean mass. For the same 150-pound person above, this would be about 130 to 140 grams of protein daily. More than double the amount of this other doctor than they're talking about different recommendations of protein. So, yeah, he's Ted Naiman's like basically double what kind of the average your average doctor is stating. So, um, that's where he comes down, as we knew. <clears throat> well, he says per body weight. So, if you are 400, right? But I think he meant, I think he's maybe that's an old article. I think he's meant, oh, he's revised that okay. to, to say goal body weight. Um, so, and then I got a, another uh, podcast with, with uh, Ted Eamon talking about this too. So what he says is, uh, it's a lot of really good stuff here. You know, protein to energy ratio is the secret to optimizing your caloric intake and dropping excess body fat. Um, humans, just like all animals, have a protein leverage phenomenon that we are mostly unaware of. And remember, that's the protein leverage hypothesis that states that animals will eat, and we're animals, will eat until they hit their protein goal. Right. So right. if you're, if you're eating, eating Twinkies all if, day. If you're eating something high on the list, like like the lean chicken, you'll hit that goal quick and you won't gain a bunch of weight. If you, if all that's around you is things that are low on the protein, available mm -hmm. protein scale, you're going to way you're over consume. Gonna, you're going to forage. You're going to yeah. graze. You're going to way over consume and then you're going to gain weight. Yep. And I like how he says we're mostly unaware of that because it's just pure instinct. Right. Your body's just saying, this is what I need. Go out and get it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if there's 
some protein in that tree bark, start chomping. Right. Oh, you see a rabbit? Oh, eat that first. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's really that simple. It is. But, I mean, it's, but it's not easy. Prioritize the protein first. So let's get into. I really hammer that home with people. Now we've talked about this. You know, we read the Normie article, we talked about Ted Neiman, we talked about, you know, the protein content. So now I want to hear your personal hacks when you need to hit that protein goal. You mentioned one earlier, egg whites versus eggs. Yep, egg whites versus eggs because it keeps the caloric and content and the fat content way down. Yep. Um, I like to use a very high protein content um, collagen. Powder. Yep, and it's chocolate. It's um, vital peptides or something. You have to send me the link. See if people are interested in the exact brand. Or okay, whatever. yeah, it's vital proteins, collagen peptides. It's the baby blue jug at Costco. People who go to Costco will know. You know what? Let's actually about. let's let's find it right now. Okay, what, what's the title of the of the brand? Um, I already forgot it. What did I call it? <laughs> vital vital proteins. So anyways, what I'll do with that, because it's super, super high content, protein content. Collagen. Like one little, yeah, yep, Collagen yep. Peptides. Collagen peptides. yep. And I get that, the brown jug with the blue top. This one? That's the chocolate, yep. So, and it comes with a little tiny scooper, and it's a ton of, that's actually a pretty good deal, 25 bucks. Um. Go to ingredients. Maybe it'll actually list the protein because I can't quite remember. I'm gonna say it's, it's. I think it's it's over 20 grams. Click on ingredients. Show it, you bitch. Oh, it just says collagen peptides from bovine, alkalized cocoa, natural flavors, some sea salt, bovine. stevia leaf. Some bovine. I like that. They don't call it cows. The ingredients list was so small, I didn't see it right away. Oh, right. It's, That's yeah, what you it's want. One sentence, right? That's what you want. So scroll down it's and see. It's not a bunch of chemicals and bullshit. Scroll down and, and, and see if it shows click the on nutrition the, facts or uh, whatever. Yeah, maybe it doesn't. Yeah, I want to see the nutrition facts. Oh, but. there you go. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> I can finish what I was saying. So I'll take that, and the scooper's like this big. Okay. And it's a ton of protein. Right. But I'll put that right away in the morning. I'll put a scoop in my coffee cup, and then I'll run the Keurig into it and I'll use a little hand mixer and I get protein there. I'll take that same scoop of the collagen and I'll put it in either oatmeal or yogurt. Those are two really good hacks. Right. Um, the coffee is a new one that I just started doing. I really, really enjoy that. Okay. I want to show my little picture here. So this is my, now, I know this this protein powder, I just got it at Walmart. I mean, sure. I have no yep. idea if it sucks or not. Um, well, see, it's a 60 grams of protein, but here's the difference. Your scooper is probably like this big. Oh, it's big. About that deep. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's hefty. The the peptides, the collagen scooper is like a thimble. So less weight, less calories. Yep. So a lot more protein per like 20 calorie. 28 grams of protein, and it's like 80 calories. Right. Whereas, Whereas this, this one is probably like 300. Yeah, it's probably like 180 or 200 and some or something right. from looking at the back. For, 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 but it's but it's <clears throat> but the the um what the hell am I calling it? The suggestive serving. Oh, yeah. Suggested serving Size, is yeah. probably two scoops. Right. So it's 300. Okay. Yep. Yep. So here's my speaking of protein in the coffee so what i do and I, I like cold coffee so i make my this oh, is really? this is how you avoid the you know starbucks six dollar per day thing right i make my coffee you know just with generic whatever coffee from hornbachers put it in a mason jar put it in the fridge over the night before so it's nice and cold i got my like 30 ounce freaking sure cup pour the coffee in i stopped using the heavy cream yep went to the coconut silk which is the coconut milk, you know, way less calories. And it's good. Cup. It's good. Yeah. I like it. It it works almost it's, I'm not gonna say it's as good as having heavy whipping cream. Well, it's that'd not. Because that'd be ridiculous. That'd be ridiculous. <laughs> but it serves its function. Nothing's better than a heavy whipping cream. Serves its function, you know. So I use that and then I throw a scoop of this uh, protein powder in. I think I have cookies and cream, but I've used vanilla sure. is a good one. Um and then over ice. That shit's freaking good. Right. And, you know, you went from just having coffee, which is basically doing nothing, except for, you know, making me alive. 
<laughs> after getting my four hours of sleep or whatever. But right. But it actually turns it into a hey, I'm getting, I'm helping get that protein goal for the day. Mm-hmm. You know, because there's sixty grams, right? Right. Probably so two scoops. Yeah, there's probably thirty in each scoop. I'm putting one big scoop in, so it's you sure. know, thirty to forty, whatever. Yep. So that's almost a third of my protein goal right there. Right. So then if and since I'm doing OMAD, you know, one meal a day, so my quantity is limited. So I really have to think strategically. It's just like a bank account. Right. So <laughs> exactly. It is. Right. You got two thousand dollars and you got yep. you can only get that's all you got to spend. Right. And so I, if I know I'm going to eat, just eat some meat later, that combined with this gets me to the one, 160, you know, grams that I have my goal weight um, without going over calorically. So mm-hmm. that's my, that's my, my hack is the protein powder in the iced coffee thing. It works really well. <clears throat> Had another couple. Um, one thing that it's kind of a mental hack is eat the protein first. Oh, right. Okay, so you got a meal in front of you. Let's say somebody hands you, you know. I never don't finish my plate, though, so <laughs> it doesn't apply. <laughs> right, but we want that satiety per calorie to kick in. Yep. So if you got a plate that's, you know, a big pe- a big hunk of steak and a big pile of fries, a lot of people are parallel eaters, what I call it, you know, bite a steak, bite a fries, bite a steak, bite a fries. Oh, I, I compartmentalize. Do you? Oh, you yeah. go. So, but if you eat the whole steak first. I don't, though. I save the steak for last because I know <laughs> I'm going to eat the whole steak no matter what. Well, okay. You're <laughs> torpedoing yourself from the get-go. But, right. But if you were going to try to implement this hack, what you would do is eat the whole steak and then, okay, hopefully the satiety kicks in and you go, I don't need those fries, right? You probably, you won't eat them. Yeah, you'll be full So you know, if, if you waited. You, right. If you prioritize and eat the literally eat the meat first, eat the protein source first, that's how you get there. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so that that's one mental one. Um, we made chili the other night, and this was just a, a hack that I kind of stumbled into. I just leave the beans out of chili. Oh, sure. I don't because I, I don't like beans anyways. I don't like them in chili either. But you know, it's awesome. You know what I did? Is we made it with ground beef, and then I also took some. We had some like because uh, we bought like half a cow, mm. so I grabbed the the crappiest steak. In there, it was like round steak or something. Yeah. Not like a grill, a grillable type cut. Sure. You know, chop, I pan fried it, seared it quick, and then threw it in there so it would cook and tender up. And then you got big chunks of meat in there, upping your protein count. No beans. Right. So really, what's in chili? Tomato pay, you know, tomato base, yeah. Ch- which is not much, you know. Chunks of tomatoes. And then a bunch of seasonings in that right. meat. Right. Without the beans, it takes the calories and the carbs way down and ups the protein per per ounce or whatever to right to whatever meat you have in there sure. basically so that was my my chili hack um another one for snacking um jerky right jerky's great yeah, so expensive though it, it is but okay you roll up to a gas station you're on the road you're a creature of habit the best thing is to just not get anything just don't eat don't eat that's always preferable but if you had to what can you even eat at a freaking Casey's? Most of the Casey's and the holiday stations have been are really good now with hard boiled eggs, meat and cheese stick packs, yep. and the little that little bag of uh, pickles. Oh, right. Yep. You can get pretty low carb. Yeah. I mean, what I just described because pickles prob- are basically cucumbers, which have right. nothing going on. Yeah, it's almost zero calories. Yeah. So, essentially, you could do that at a gas station now at holiday specifically. Yep. But the 300 calories I just listed is probably like $42. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So not ideal. I mean, to me, the best thing is just walk in and pay for your gas and, or pay at the pump and just get the hell out of there. Get out of there. If, or if you're on a long drive and you do have a little bit of growling going on, <laughs> just get a big, huge seltzer water. Oh like yeah. Like a LaCroix. Or, right. Just pound those. What I found is like my giant thing that was in this, you know, in this picture here, my giant. I use yeah. that for my electrolyte water also, which I have the LMNT, the electrolyte uh, packets with the yeah. magnesium, potassium. When I'm fasting, especially, um, sipping on that, I mean, it's literally like nothing, no right. calories, and it's all just those minerals sure. and electrolytes. So that, that really helps stave off the hunger um, too. So, but yeah. Oh, that, and that's, just a more of a diet. But then you're just 
more of a dieting tip than now a... You're, now you're just not eating versus right, fasting. Exactly. But, it, and that's more of a dieting tip than a protein hack. Right. Is, like, I, I do this to my kids now. Because like, I'm hungry and really they're just bored. Ugh. They go, drink a giant glass of water I'm and get back to me. I'm 48 years old and I say that. <laughs> I, could, I could eat. <laughs> right. I'm hungry. No, I'm not. I literally say, drink a giant glass of water and then come back and tell me if you're still hungry. Well, most of the time they're not. Because if you just like literally pound a giant thing of water, I mean. Or they still are hungry and they're just like, whatever, that old bastard, he's not going to give us anything <laughs> anyway. So just let it go. Yep. You at least got to give put up a little resistance right. to them eating crap. Until they go to school and say, my daddy won't feed me. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, it's hard enough trying to have them make the right choices at school since school lunches are complete shit. Oof. Just all pack, prepackaged carbs now. I just oh, that's, remember I'd go eat with Emmy and I'd, they'd put the, the tray down. I'd be like, <laughs> where's nothing. the actual food? Yeah, there's nothing here for me. I mean, I think the, the other day they had corn dogs. <laughs> I like a good corn dog. Oh, I love it. Yeah, they taste good. Hyper palatable. Yeah, right. But holy crap. They're good in the Can't air fryer. Can we do a little better? They're good in the air fryer. Oh, Nice. So, you got any more protein hacks? Nah, just put it in shit. Oh, I do have one. Okay, let's hear it. Um, if you're an oatmeal or a breakfast cereal eater, mm -hmm. um, make a, like a vanilla shake and use that for your milk. Oh. Vanilla protein shake? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Like right. your little yep. cookies and cream here. Yep. Imagine taking that with a little bit of that silk, making a little protein shake. And then putting that over like Oreo cereal. Right, right. Yeah. It improves that bowl. Sure. That's for sure. But Still not good, but. No, it's not. It, but it, it makes that bowl have more protein than it did. Or just have protein. <laughs> yeah, right. Because <laughs> no it shit. didn't have any. Nothing. All right, guys. I get to the point where I, now where I prioritize my protein so much that yeah. if I know I'm way behind, I get like super anxious and guilty. Right. I'm just like. God, I could eat. And then I'm like, okay, I look at my app or I'm thinking back to what I ate that day. And I'm like, oh my God, I've only had like 20 grams of protein today. You know what that is and though? It, That's the right attitude. Right. right. Oh, I right, mean, right, right. You're, you're behaving like everyone should. Right. You're thinking because you know how important it is to the body's development and yep. to keeping it on track with your goals. So there's nothing wrong with that. Right. I mean, so I had cube cheese. Hard white cheese, low in fat. Yep. And then I had a, um, then I had just had chunks of cold roasted turkey breast. I thought you were going to say chunks of coal. <laughs> oh, no. Cold <laughs> right. turkey breast. Yeah. Um, instead of my nightly concoction of the oh, the yogurt, oh, blueberries. Because you wanted to make sure it was all protein. Yep. Yeah. But if I wasn't just constantly protein, 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 you I would have just, just had the yogurt. The yogurt. Right. Yeah. And then you would have missed your goals. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think you have to prepare your house in such a way that those things are available to you. You know, so obviously if you know you love hard-boiled eggs and they're going to help you get there, we'll just make a bunch ahead of time or right. whatever. Yep. Or have the egg white carton and, you know, you got to have this stuff in your house mm -hmm. so that you're not tempted to, you know, eat the bread or the – like in my house, we do not have cereal or milk. Right. Because I know my, if it was there, my kids would freaking eat it. They always choose that. For sure. Over For eggs. Kids. Because why wouldn't you? Right. I mean, what tastes better than freaking, you know, Cocoa Puffs? I mean, with an Cocoa omelet Puffs is, with chocolate milk. Yeah, an omelet is not, they're never going to pick the omelet. You right. Know? Never. That's but when why. you just make a bunch of scrambled eggs and hand them a plate with some sausage, they go, thanks. Yep. And just eat it. And then they go about right. their day. You know what else they don't do? They go, thanks. And then they eat until they're full. Yep. And then they walk away. And there's probably, I'm willing to bet right. there's probably some left on the plate. Yes, because that's not hyper palatable. The, the cocoa puffs would be gone. Oh, yeah. Whether they're the full they'd or be not. In the second bowl. Oh, sure. Because it tastes so freaking good. Yep. Yeah. That, so then you're putting way more calories in every freaking time. Yeah. That's why I have to snack while I cook. Like, oh. Tonight I'll go home and tonight's my night off from training, but I'll go home and make something to eat. And as I'm doing it, I need to. Just snack. I need to, my hands have to be snacking on something while I'm cook, cooking or making whatever it is. So what's to your go-to when you do that? Beef sticks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Beef sticks from Costco. Yeah. They have new beef sticks there. They're moderate fat and like zero sodium. Oh, nice. Yeah, they're really good too. 
I thought of one more. When I make my chaffles, you know, which oh. are the eggs and the mozzarella. Yeah. I put a half a scoop of the vanilla protein powder in that mix. Oh. Oh, it makes the chaffles 10 times better. Really? Yeah, because then they they smell, it smells like a pancake, oh, like a vanilla. It's like they put vanilla in the batter. Yeah, it's like, exactly. But it's all protein. Right. So that's a really good hack for the chaffles is add a little bit of protein powder in there, especially vanilla I found is the perfect one. Yeah, I like that. Because also it's, then it's like a legit freaking waffle or pancake, you know, depending on which we actually got a little, one of those little mini pancake grills too. So yeah. We that, but Yum. yeah. So that's a great, uh, great hack. That would be a good, uh, that'd be a good email the show. Your, your favorite hack. Yeah. I mean, cause I mean the chaffle is just literally eggs, mozzarella, mozzarella cheese and a little bit of protein powder. I mean, that's right. it. That's all that's in there. And my kids, and I put a little sugar free, you know, some sure. butter and some sugar free yep. syrup. They can't tell the difference. Oh, so really? it's, you know, it's just as, because waffles are awful. <laughs> I hate waffles. That's a source of contention in our house. They should just call them awfuls. I know. That's what I say all the time. <laughs> and then now you got people like the black coffee company, waffle company downtown charging 20 bucks a waffle. You mean the guy that eats meat, that, that loves to eat meat, that tastes like human flesh, doesn't like waffles? <laughs> I don't know if I trust his opinion. I don't mind. I don't hate waffles, <laughs> but in my- Sounds like you do. This is like the eighth time you brought it up. <laughs> I just, I have a grudge against waffles that, because waffles, are, they're just fancy pancakes. I think they're better than French toast and they're not. I have a grudge against waffles. <laughs> That's the the pettiest thing anyone's ever, ever uttered. <laughs> I have a grudge against waffles. Or maybe just people that think waffles are superior to French toast. What a stupid notion. Oh, you know what? Speaking of French toast, okay, and we're chaffles, pancakes, French toast. Okay, we got. I got to find this recipe that Greg Doucette puts up all the time. One of his main, he has Make a cookbook. Make sure it's not a video because I'll punch the computer screen. <laughs> He's got a cookbook. It's called the Anabolic Cookbook. <sighs> and one of his main things that he makes all the time is, is this protein French toast. And I think he finds some super, some like low carb bread or high protein bread or something. And then he uses egg whites instead of eggs in the mix. And he's like hacked it so it's all. It's like as high as protein as you can possibly get. Really? Yeah. So I'll find that recipe and, and put it in the show notes too. I could make that recipe in spite of his face. <laughs> well, I'll just find the recipe. I won't I won't send you the video of him making oh, it with his apron with no shirt on. His squeaky, yeah. screeching voice. <laughs> you know, I actually watch I used to watch him a ton because he the, the YouTube algorithm would suggest him a lot yep. based on what I was searching. I must have been searching for high squeaky voice from bodybuilders. <laughs> For some reason he came up. Wow. But he he actually talks about that. He said, "When I was first started out, I would talk in my normal voice like oh, this. I I'm Canadian." This. Yeah. And then he goes, "And then I was pissed off on one, and it just the views went through the roof. And I tried not doing it again, and then doing it, not doing it, doing it. Every video where I was like yelling, rah, 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 the views were always like double. So I'm like, well, this is my thing now. But sometimes it doesn't go. <laughs> sometimes it's like he's talking no. about something that should be calm and he's but screaming. It's completely forced and oh, he admits right. it. Right. But it doesn't make it, it right. It doesn't make it right. right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to wrap it up there, guys. So if you got any protein hacks that you've heard of, uh, email the show at info at fit and sure track you're your protein. Yes. Track, track, track. Track it. I want to know too. Oh, by so, the way, I'm up to 25 chin ups now <clears throat> this morning. Ooh. Got up another one. It's all right. Yep. Every couple of weeks, I'm adding one. I love it. Thanks for the update. Yes. Now back to tracking protein. <laughs> yes. Send the show. Track your protein for a week. Don't change anything, and let us know how much protein you have. Right. And don't be embarrassed. You're gonna be. You're gonna feel ashamed because it's gonna be like 18 grams. Dewey's like you should feel ashamed at least. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll work on it. And if you like waffles, don't ever admit it. <laughs> All right, guys, check us out anywhere uh, podcasts are found. Please subscribe, rate, review, and share. I'm happy to note we're up to 100 subscribers on YouTube yes, as of today. I think the 100th is 100. I think it was my wife. That's three <laughs> digits. I go, did you? <laughs> I said, did you? Are you a subscriber? And she said, you have a podcast? She goes, she goes I was like one of the first, I think. <laughs> I thought she was going to say, you have a podcast? <laughs> right. I was wondering where you went every Wednesday. Right. All right, guys, support support the show at FuriousMerch.com. You can buy T-shirts there, and we will see you next week.